That's for sure. How come Karsten's hairline isn't going anywhere? It's just annoying, isn't he? He looks so good. Gorgeous. To thunderous applause here, Flavio Damiano coming from Kelly MMA just down the road. Just down the road. And Kelly MMA, pretty new team, split off of one of the other teams that's a regular here on Battle Arena. And we know that the head coach, Mark Kelly, has been a regular on Battle Arena as well. Very, very experienced over all the different aspects of combat sports. And uh, pretty new gym, but with some very established fighters. And I think they're going to put their stamp on the map straight away. Well, that's the thing, you, when you start a new gym you really want to get your first crop out there fairly quickly because you want them to have the opportunity to really cement the fact that your gym is legitimate and kelly's mma they're ready to do this look at the back on that kid damiano you've been doing your lap pull downs haven't you big guy not what? like chris over here <laughs> i do lap pull downs i just don't do anything i need your tips trick steve how do i get some lats I do pull downs, I do chin ups, not a lot, but I do chin ups, pull ups. Barbell rows. That's a good idea. I think I'm just, I'm built. Do, like, you, ever, do you ever do those Russian rows where like you got like the, what is it, the Smith machine and you like hang off of it and you just pull yourself up like a reverse press up? Oh. That's a good one because you can just burn that out like crazy. I like that, Steve. That's a good shout. There you go. Welcome to it. Because I think I'm too tempted to cheat on like rows and stuff. I end up kind of. Using a bit Get of a bit back. Yeah. Oh, and uh, slow eccentric movements. I do like chin ups to failure, which is about three. And then I do a few jumping ones where I slow the yeah. low. That's good. Ah. This, we're going to come next with next year. Next year, you're not even going to be able to fit into this lovely it's shirt of yours. Tight. It's a bit tighter than you see. That's mostly fat, but it's a little bit of muscle. You don't want to get this thing where like the buttons are popping out. It's not <laughs> cool. There we go. Look at this. Both of them are absolutely massive. I can't believe they're 72. I need to go check the score, the weigh-in sheet. Let's check the scales. Swagger Jagger there. So both fighters are right are 0.5 kilos off of the championship weight at lightweight. So this isn't even really a catch weight of 72. It's just pretty much so both guys at lightweight. I mean, they're like spot on the same height, very similar builds. This is interesting. I'm pretty sure it's both their debuts as well. Oh, shape. man. To come in in this type of nick for this. Got that almost like Ooh, that. Flavio with a calf kick and a big right big hand, right hand. shoots. Man, you've got to imagine he must be a powerhouse in the gym. Big overhand right, breaks in, ooh, eats a knee for his trouble there. Yeah. You know that David Marzik had almost this interesting, like, out there tie guard up momentarily. Yeah. And now he's digging an underhook well and looking to turn him. That's a hyper-aggressive start. It drags him to the mat. Reverse. Mm. David is strong. Look at that. Straight back Just to his feet. Just a pop back up. Like you said, Chris, the best time to get up was as soon as you hit the mat. And he did it brilliantly there. It's just David needs to work on that head position. Just being controlled at the moment by Flavio. Even da yeah, even Flavio is just not turning his head in. He's not getting that nut of his head under the chin. Could do a little bit more with that, but it looks like he's working to get his hands together in a body lock. Yeah, I could see that David would like to get some separation. Use some of that Siam MMA striking. Flavio is having none of it. He is the wet blanket trying to drag to the floor. Head position, double underhooks. His legs are quite close together. You feel like maybe he could drop down for a double. Trying to get another trip, but messes it up. Ends up on the bottom. In half guard, yes. That's a that's such a tricky thing with that inside leg trip, that elevation, that kind of inside reap that people do. 
is that you got to get hopping and then you end up hopping yourself and pulling him down on top of you. David Pepper in the body, softening him up. You got to wonder how much energy that expended on Flavia because he really initiated that, tried to hold it into the position, but Marzik so he's was able to turn it. Transition back to full guard there, Steve. It's one of the things that you just don't see a lot of full guard in MMA anymore, unless you're Krog Gracie or someone. But uh, <laughs> if it's too much. most of the time from here, you actually want to go like feet on the hips, make the separation. If you are looking for an angle, yeah, feet, yeah. the foot comes onto the chest. You see, you get some close guard here. There's almost a bit of like a K guard opportunity. Yeah. yeah you don't want to be here all day long. He's trying to isolate the arm, maybe looking for a hip bump, and then just trying to control the wrist. Yeah, and we got David doing a good job to stay on top, pepper in, staying safe. He's yeah. not risking anything. And he's doing just enough to stay on top to dominate the position to make yep. sure that he gets the aggression points, he gets the cage control points, and possibly the damage over time. Flavio going to that kind of scissor sweep position, trying to get the knee across, and then might try and transition to feet on the hips and then be able to make some space. It's one of those things that it can be seen as high risk as maybe David then passes, gets some more dominant position, but from here, Flavio is losing the round. Yeah, and you've only got 15 seconds left. Right, that's the that's the call that needs to be made by the corner to tell you to let you know how much time is is has passed and what whether you have an opportunity to do something with that remaining those remaining seconds because right now it is all David Marzak with two seconds remaining and he is able to dig digs to the body there at the very end and just sneaks a shot over top. Yeah, that was definitely uh, the round for David Marzak, but. Almost didn't get enough information in that round to judge how the rest of this fight is going to go or have some feeling about it because frenetic striking at the start. Kind of the only reason David ended up on top because Flavio went for a takedown but somehow ended up on the bottom. Messed up that trip. Yes. And I, f I went over this with uh, a couple of our MMA fighters over at RGA Bucks the other day. The thing is, with a lot of fighters going into these upper body clinches, these kind of traditional Greco positions, if you are not comfortable there, you are going to be in a lot of trouble. Oh, it looks like uh, we have a special guest. We got a special guest commentator coming in for our next fight. But if you're not capable in those in those upper body positions, it's better to just shoot your right hand over the top and look in for a double leg, and then tr transition off to singles. It's good to get a get a leg out from under your opponent. Here we go, round two. Battle that of the seemed bots. like a long break, and I think it that did. probably helped with Flavio Damiano. Watch, he's going to look. I bet you any money. Damiano loves the right hand. Oh, lovely jab cross. Yep, see? Loves the right hand, then he tries to break position. And look, double underhooks here, and ooh, a trip position was there. Steve, I just get the impression Flavio does not want to strike. Does not feel comfortable well, he, boxing. And, and then he almost lost the transition there. He's, he was out of position momentarily. Unfortunately, Marzik wasn't able to capitalize by getting his hips sideways. Now he's got another underhook. He throws a knee up. Yes, fantastic knees in this 50-50 position from David. Marzik doing well to tie up that far wrist of Flavio. And look at him pummeling in very well, showing very good awareness. And then he just gets a little bit excited for the left good hook. Good double underhook. That's more like it. Will he end up on the bottom again? Oh, beautiful counter wrestling from Way David. To stay up. He was and he did that without any overhook position. So he didn't have a wizard position, and he was just able to bring his hips over top. He's got really good awareness when he's up in the air. What do you think that Flavio is doing wrong that he can't get this to the floor and keep him there? He's not getting sideways on the hips. So he's not able to either step around the hips of Marzik or get his hip in between, similar to what we saw with uh, Saga Elnius earlier, getting the hip in and riding those hips up. Because this, it, it's too much. We used to call this the 50 50 position in wrestling in the early 2000s because it just doesn't favor anybody that over under. Oh, David look, with the takedown. David now. goes nice. for the legs. Oh, but he's in the guillotine. And it's a high elbow one, oh, but he's nice. able to pair it off. Really hard to finish these guillotines with the eight ounce gloves. I said, I, I like that from both fighters. I like Flavio Damiano being aware and setting up the guillotine, but that's what I wanted to see differently in the clinch game dropping down taking singles and doubles and running forward with them because that's a good way of tying up your your opponent he's got a good head position he's right in his own corner is Flavio Damiano but hopefully they're giving him some good advice because we saw the ground and pound can be very effective from David Marzvik yes and it's not looking particularly technical there from Flavio although he's trying to tie up that arm maybe from kind of Kimura trap but it's very obvious it's very telegraphed 
He's not looking particularly slick off his back. And sometimes when guys are built like this, it's like how much of their time in the gym is playing guard off your back? Mm -hmm. you know, often you're the big powerhouse wrestler and you're on top all the time. And then what high percentage sweeps are you going to be able to actually get going off yeah. of your back? Right now... He's just th surviving. Yeah, there is that kind of arm crush position he could get into, but it's just not coming to fruition right now. And from Marzik's position, go to the body. He did it at the end of the, end of the first round. Start hit, smashing up that body. Exactly. Dig into the ribs on, the, on his right side and causing some problems. Really good head position here from Marzik as well. You know, he's making it very uncomfortable. And uh, maybe this is one of the things. Flavio seems to be coming to the fight and being very reliant on his physicality, whereas David is being a bit more measured, a bit more technical, very, very patient with the transitions, counter wrestling. And it's, it's taking the fight. And that's you're seeing it in the striking especially. Flavio looks just a bit uncomfortable whenever they're in a boxing exchange where David can kind of sit there, throw some combinations. We'll probably see it here now, yes. Yeah. Look at David drop right down to the single leg, then he changes it to a double and he runs it through with the head to the outside. Very well put together there. Now here's the... That, that's a good point you put, put Chris. <sighs> Flavio looks like the kind of guy that bullies everybody in the gym. And he probably gets a whole bunch of people that's like, oh God, I'm, I'm going with Flavio again. He's going to just ragdoll me. So you almost end up giving up and accepting bottom position. That is not what David Marzik's doing. He is fighting every position the entire way through. Unless you're holding him and pinning his back to the mat, you do not have him down yet. He's ready to bounce up and get all over you. And that's what he's been doing with these first two rounds. And he's really taken it to, to Flavio, unfortunately. And now, I just don't see, I, I can't really see the tide turning. But Flavio does have dynamite in that right hand and he needs to set it up to just get Marzik to respect him because Marzik was popping jabs off like he was opening bottles. Here we go. Flavio versus David, round three. There's the right hand, he steams in. It does really steam in. Now underhooks again from Marzik. Oh, nice right hand, sneaky little right from David. Just does that to annoy him almost, it seems. He's got that nice underhook, now he's got double underhooks. Watch those knees start sneaking in for Marzik. Look, now, now Marzik is to the side, right? He could get the hip over on the outside and he can start bringing in that body lock if he can connect his hands. Oh, it's, like, it's like he's listening to you, Steve. Look at that. Look yeah, at that there body. it is. Nice takedown. <laughs> Huge takedown by David. Fantastic. That is good, buddy. That's good. <laughs> you stay on top, bro. Keep working. David enjoying that. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I like that, baby. That was a beautiful combination. Beautiful. Bring the hips in as they step out. He lifts them high into the Northamptonshire sky, and he's ready to get on top. And now, I hope he doesn't lose any sort of focus. Oh, he's back on the head here. He's got the underhooks. He's digging well. That's Lucas great work by Flavio to get back to his feet. Very strong from Flavio. Very strong indeed. <laughs> the fight is certainly not over, and now the knees come up. He knows he's in a fight now. Thoroughly enjoying But the attitude of Marzik, man. The yeah. boy's got swagger. I knew it. As soon as he stepped in the, into the ring, he's got swagger. And I think that Flavio needs to take that rub off of him a little bit. Yeah, he feels like with Flavio, if he could do a few interclubs, just get a bit more experience. Maybe He's got his hands experience. connected here. Let's see if he tries to flip the script. Oh, he David, tries to get the same thing. David digs that underhook. Yeah, he does again. He's got to ride it high, punch up through the elbow. Oh, nice. Just great feet awareness. Now look, oh, David oh, again. Oh, about it. Yeah, he, but he used that, he used that overhook position, that over. Oh, oh and he chins him against the cage. David. Left hook lands, right hand lands right after it. Flavio's got no choice but to hold on. We've got a minute and 10 seconds left. That's a lot of time for him to work. And then the knees come up right into the solar plexus, right under those guts. All that food you've been using to replenish yourself is coming <laughs> right back up. 58 seconds in the third round. It's been all David this whole fight. And I feel like if David could just break away, he could get the finish. This has been a brilliant round from Look, he's popping the head around. Knees up the middle again would be great. He's got that head position. This is a real coming out party here for David Marzek from Siam MMA. Under. What a good position. Just look into your opponent a bit more. St stalling a bit. Uh, even, and, and the Siam corner is asking for a finish. They're saying we got to <laughs> set it up. Let's make it happen. It's good that they've got that kind of warrior spirit that's not done until it's done. And yeah. Fa Flavio's just holding on here. He doesn't want any of it, any of it right now. I Which see. I can understand. Look at that Lovely knee drops knee. him. My gosh, and now he's going around the back. Those punches are handing. They're just he's just whipping him in. <laughs> Marzik lo almost looks into his eyes there and says, Yes, there it is. Tongue out to the camera. What a performance. 
David Marzik, he has put the stamp on this division, the 72 kilogram fighters. Everyone in Battle Arena is on notice. David is here. He's got monster takedowns. He's got dynamite hands, and he will be a contender in this division. The kid can scrap. He's got my scrapping seal of approval right there. And that was a great fight. Really excellent body lock takedown. Totally turns him sideways and just slams him into the fence. Oh, I'm joined here by a special guest. Would you like to introduce yourself to everybody? Yeah, hello. I am uh, Jack Holmes, and I am representing Battle Arena today as well. Hi, Jack. How are you, Steve? Jack, you're an up-and-coming amateur MMA fighter, aren't you? You've had a bit of a setback at the mo recently, so you're turning to broadcasting. What did you think of that fight? You were right here cage side with us there, Jack. Oh, that was an amazing fight. The opponent couldn't quite outdo him. But I have to say, those knees were lethal, and that throw that he did was impeccable. I've just got to say, Steve. And you look, there's not too much between the physicality of him, but a lot more heavily muscled was Flavio Damiano. And David Mar Marzik just showed you that it isn't all looks that get the fights won. And they got to switch faces a couple of times. But here we go for the official decision. All right, now it's time for Steve's threes there, Jack. So, honestly, I don't want to say anything about David Marzik. Really great performance, maybe a bit of head position against the cage. That's what I'll leave you with. Find ways of getting that striking off because it was absolutely brilliant. Flavio Damiano, my man, listen, have some have some belief in your right hand. Throw that right hand, dip onto the hips, and look to the takedowns from the single or double leg. Conversely as well, when you go back to the gym, Flavio, my man, you should be Fabio by the time you come back because you should be amazing off your back. Find the positions that people are going to put you in and make those your home. Find the worst position you have. Get yourself some 84 kilo, 77 kilo, sized grapplers and get those guys on top of you beating your ass. And let's go Chris to Simpson, Chris Simpson with your winner, David Marzek. Beautiful performance, pretty much flawless. One thing that I was quite surprised at, and I don't know if you were as well, is that you kept initiating the clinch, even though you were you were clearly the stronger of the opponent and you were clearly more comfortable in the clinch. Were you surprised that he kept coming into those grappling exchanges with you? Um, no, not really. I knew he's going to be trying wrestling against me. I tried to strike a bit more, but I lost my head in the striking kind of went out of there and froze a little bit in the striking department, but in the clinch it felt, felt great, so I was like, you know what, I'll take it to the ground, get some knees in, and uh, yeah. You're barely even really breathing heavy. Um, how much do you how much do you give to your conditioning and your uh, and your fitness? So fitness beats everything, like my coach said. Uh, the team prepared me for this fight amazingly. Uh, team Siam, Corby, the best gym in Corby and in the area by far, so don't be going to those useless gyms in Corby, only Siam, yeah? And they prepared me for it. Conditioning, hard rounds. You know, I've been, I've been to war, inspiring. I've been to war, so I, this wasn't anything special. It looked like he was definitely fading. Did, did you notice that he was fading even after the first round? He looked, he looked like really weird. I, I hit him with a knee in the first round, and he kind of gave a bit of a sigh of uh, just, you know, he was tired. All the air was out of him. I took him down. I was talking to him a little bit, you know, trying to get him angry, trying to get him even more, you know, tired. And yeah. Start banging, banging him in the in the in the in the, in the grappling exchanges, you know, hammer fists, everything, and yeah. yeah. And what are the rest of the plans for 2023 now, David? You know what? I think I'm gonna have a break now. It's been a long camp, and then end of the year, last show of the year, I think I want to fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, hopefully I'll be there for it, and I look forward to seeing you fight again, David. Thank you very much, mate. Cheers, guys. Thank you.